in northeastern India, in the area of Western Bengal, a mythical land extends on the Himalayan foothills. Since the 19th century, it has been producing one of the most fascinating teas in the world, Darjeeling tea. Nowadays, all Darjeeling gardens belong to multinational companies located in Calcutta, except one, Makaibari Garden. Raja Banerjee is the last single owner who manages the tea estate, which has been in his family for 140 years. He was the first one to introduce organic farming in Darjeeling, thus breaking away from local practices and signing a new pact with nature. You see the tea below you? I call this place my dreaming land. The passion for tea is to make the specific personality of Makaibari reflected in the cup anywhere you drink it in the world. Darjeeling tea is not an industry, it is a handicraft, a very specialized art. Home to a community of 1,700 Nepalese natives, split up into seven villages according to their ethnic origins and castes, Raja Banerjee's property covers an area of 750 hectares. Amongst the inhabitants, 700 workers are chosen to go to Raja's plantations every day. 70% of them are women. The picking of leaves is the most critical stage in tea cultivation and processing. The sap being concentrated at the shrub's extremities, the pickers have to choose the leaves that are closest to the outermost shoots so as to recover the most intense flavors. Women have more dexterity than men for this picking motion. There are three harvests. The first one in April is called First Flush. It is eagerly anticipated all around the world as the latest vintage. May harvest, or second flush, gives birth to the teas that best represent Darjeeling excellence. The last one is autumn harvest, just after the rainy season. At the end of the afternoon, once the tea leaves have been gathered at the factory, the manufacturing process can begin. To turn tea leaves into brewing tea takes less than 24 hours. First, the leaves are spread out on ventilated drying trays under a powerful blower. During the night, they gradually wither and lose nearly 70% of their moisture. At dawn, for about 40 minutes, the leaves are poured into a machine that rolls them up without crumbling them. Cells release essential oils that will allow the subsequent fermentation process to take place. This slight pressure also releases the saps that give each tea its characteristic aroma. Then the rolled leaves are kept in the fermentation process for approximately two hours, depending on the ambient degree of moisture. The tea oxidizes and takes on its characteristic brown color. The fermentation process is completed by roasting the leaves at a temperature approaching 90 degrees Celsius. As a result, the tea leaves' moisture content drops to just 5%. The leaves are placed on sifters, called screening machines, in order to be sorted by leaf size. They are graded and the slenderest ones usually generate the best teas. Finally, a machine uses electromagnetism to eliminate the impurities that may remain in the leaves.
cargo is shipped to all corners of the earth. Each year, Makaibari Gardens produces 120 tons of tea for distributors in a dozen countries, from department stores to the most refined shops. Well, I'm the fourth generation in Makaibari. Uh, the Banerjees came down up here from a principality in south of Bengal in 1858. And my great-grandfather, Girish Chandra Banerjee, was the first man to be here. That was in 1859. The garden was homesteaded and brought up, reared up by a deserter from the British Army called Captain Samla. He and my great-grandfather were great pals. So just before Captain Samla died in 1859, Makaibari was officially recognized as the first tea plantation in Darjeeling and he sold it subsequently a month later before his death to my great-grandfather. When I arrived here I had no intention of living in Makaibari at all. I came for a holiday. But man proposes and God disposes. My father was a much cleverer man than I gave him credit for. And since he knew I loved to ride, he immediately got me a thoroughbred, a resource, ex resource, and uh, a gun. He said, son, shoot, ride, because you look tired. You need a holiday. I was riding my thoroughbred at a gallop and I fell. And in that fall, my whole life changed. I saw a vision. It was an out-of-body experience because I wasn't unconscious. But the visage that appeared to me was a magnificent glow, an eerie light, but quite beautiful. And the sounds from the environment, from the trees that came, save me, save me, though melancholic, was a hypnotic musical sound. I knew then that I had to spend the rest of my life at Makaibari.